and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, hi, I'm Elle. I'm the author of the blog Enlivening Elle, which is a yoga and health blog, and I'm also a yoga teacher. Um, in this YouTube video, we're going to be talking about the calf muscle, um, specifically how we can lengthen it, because a lot of us have it chronically tight. I've had quite a few requests from runners and cyclists who find that there's just no mobility there. And if they do come to any kind of stretching, there's just not much room for them to go anywhere. A little bit of context about the calf muscles. So there's actually two muscles that make up your calves. You've firstly got the gastrocnemius, which starts by attaching to the femur, so the muscle, sorry, the bone on your thighs. Starts actually in two, draws down back into one muscle and where it becomes part of the Achilles tendon. The other muscle, your soleus, sits underneath and it attaches to the bones that make up the front of your shin. That goes straight down and then also fuses with the gastrocnemius, becoming your Achilles tendon as well. So the function of the calf muscles is to contract, which lifts the heel of your foot. So that's my calf muscle contracting, which in turn shortens the calf muscles by nature of the contraction. Problem is if you're doing a lot of flexion, a lot of planular flexion, so a lot of lifting of the heel, but not so much of the extension where the toes lift instead, then you're gonna find that you're going to be consistently shortening the muscle without lengthening it back out. This can be a little bit uncomfortable both in daily life to the extreme of things like shin splints, but it can also just be a bit frustrating when you're trying to improve that mobility. Maybe you're going to the gym and you want to do a good low squat and you can't get there without your heels lifting. Maybe you're going to yoga and you can't do your downward dog with the heels on the ground or you're in warrior one and the heel lifts or your hips have to open out to the side to compensate to get the heel onto the ground. So for this 20 minute class, you'll need a few little props. You want to have a block. If you don't have a block or a brick at home, then grab a book, a nice chunky book will do fine. You want a strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, a nice thick belt is fine. Just make sure it's not too thin so it cuts into your stretches. And then finally, you want to have something like a rolled up blanket, a rolled up towel, at some points in the class we'll have it a little bit tighter, at some points we'll just roll it out so it's a bit looser. And then you want a yoga mat and something comfortable to move in. So I hope you enjoy this session, nice and short and sweet, so you can quickly squeeze it into your routine without it impacting your day too much. I hope you enjoy. So to start off with, you're going to want to grab your rolled up towel, blanket, mat, whatever it is you've got, and come into hero's pose. So you'll pop the blanket or towel just on top of the middle of your calf and sit down. If you're finding that it's a little bit hard to have your hips so high up in the air, you can always put a block or two underneath you so you can sit down. The tighter your towel or blanket is rolled, the better this is maybe a little bit too loose. And then you're going to sit here for maybe around 30 seconds to get a little bit of myofascial release in. So you don't want the towel to be too close to the joint of your knee because you're wanting to be stretching out the fattest part of the muscle, the main part of the muscle, rather than putting stress upon the joints. So here, just by having this bit of pressure down on the muscles, you're helping to release off any knots and tensions in the same way that if you were using say a foam roller or a little massage ball you can work out those knots. Just make sure you're breathing here particularly if you're finding it a little bit uncomfortable. It shouldn't be so uncomfortable that you're really having to fight to be in but at the same time you should be feeling a little bit of pressure on the centre part of your calf muscles. Up or more breaths here. If you notice that you're still holding the muscles in tight, you're engaging the calves, maybe even the hamstrings, see if you can consciously relax them down, relax into that myofascial release. And then getting ready, you'll come back up out, releasing off the blanket, just popping it out of the way for now. And then come into your all fours position and then just stretch out the calves, the backs of your legs, particularly after being rounded through, it's nice to stretch out the knees here. 
switching sides, toes on the ground, heels pressing backwards. Imagine that you're pressing it into a wall. We'll maybe take that on once more, both sides. Stretching out, creating length. And then from here, you'll tuck the toes under, push bottom back towards heels and reach up if you're downward dog. Taking feet to about hip width apart, so a little bit of a gap between the feet. And then start to walk out your downward dog, letting one leg straighten more than the other, getting a calf stretch into one side and then the other. Allowing the hips and shoulders to move with you as you bend the legs and this allowing that heel to get a little bit closer to the ground. Either staying here in your downward dog, maybe keep walking it out, maybe settling into stillness. If your hands or shoulders are getting a little bit, a little bit sore, finding it a little bit tiring, then feel free just to drop down onto the knees for child's pose here for a moment or two. Or just keep working through that downward dog. If you're still in downward dog, just make sure you're pressing those fingertips into the mat. You're rolling the shoulders away from the ears, so you're not collapsing in. You're keeping it as a strong downward dog. And if you're in your child's pose, just come back into that downward dog. And then here, take the right foot, take it back so the toes are towards the heels. Maybe bend into that standing leg. And press back, so you'll be feeling a stretch through the legs. So you press the heels down towards the ground and then swap sides, pressing both heels back. And see how it feels if you take that foot a little bit closer this time, maybe you can make it more of a stretch for the back leg than the front. Breathing through. Come back to the original version with the feet in their original position, stepping back slightly. And then take the right leg forwards. If it doesn't get quite all the way in between the hands, maybe it stops here. Then just pull it forwards with your opposite hand. Drop down onto the knee. And then come into your half splits. But here, grab your block again. So if you don't have a block, feel free to use, say, a book, anything you've got in the house that's sort of similar. And then allowing the foot to be propped up against the brick. You might even find it helpful to layer up two, just whatever feels better for you. And whenever you're in these kind of forward fold positions, just make sure the chest is lifting so you're not rounding, you're not dropping the head, the forehead towards the knee. You're lifting forwards. If it's really strong, you can always drop back onto the heels and get your stretch in here. One more breath here. And then re-bend the foot. Step back to your plank and maybe we'll take a vinyasa through. So it's first one, so let's drop down onto the knees. Exhale to lower, notice that my chest and hips land at the same time, my elbows are in tight. Inhale, soft cobra. We're not working on back bends today, so let's keep the chest low. And then exhale, roll up and back for your downward dog. Just keep it still this time. Maybe the heels are a little bit close to the ground, maybe you've still got bend in the leg, whatever works better for you. And then left leg will come through, so either all the way or using your hands for support once again. Grabbing that block, tucking it under the foot, exhaling back, lifting through the chest, feeling that stretch through. And a lot of these calf stretches will also stretch your hamstrings as well, which is always a nice thing. But just seeing if you can turn it into more of a calf stretch by lifting those toes, 
So you're getting the benefits in this part of the leg as well as just the top. Keeping that breath through the nose if you can, both in and out. And then rebending, moving the block out of the way. Step back, find your flow. Maybe the legs stay hovering this time. Full chaturanga to the ground. Inhaling, maybe it's an upward dog this time. Maybe it's still a low cobra. Exhale to downward dog. And then on your next exhale, step feet up in between the hands. This might be a nice time to get a little bit of extra calf stretch in here by just lifting up the toes slightly. If your hands can't reach the floor, you can either make use of those blocks once again, or if you don't have one, hands can rest on the legs. Just make sure the knees aren't locked out. And then toes come down to the ground, pressing them in. Inhale to come all the way up. So standing from here, hands onto the hips, and then you'll step the right leg back. I'm just going to step, yeah, step the right leg back and have the toes pointing about 45 degrees, maybe 60 degrees forward. Keeping those hands on the hips, make sure the hips are pointing forwards here. So if you need to stagger the foot in slightly, so you can keep the heel on the ground and the hips forwards, so that's fine. You can also take the stance a little bit wider, particularly if you think you're going to wobble. Inhaling here, lifting the chest, exhale to fold forwards, hinging from the hips, coming into a pyramid pose. So once again, you can make use of bricks if your hands need them to get to the ground. If they can get to the ground, you can again lift the toes up on a brick, getting that extra bit of a stretch through the calf. So here, your right hip might have started to snudge back a little bit. Nudge back and nudge back. So draw it forward by bringing the inner thighs together. And then releasing off. Hands back to the hips. Inhaling to come all the way up. Step back to the top. And then we'll do that on the other side. So this time the left leg will step back. So your right leg is in front this time. Squeezing the hips forwards. Adjusting your stance if you need to. Inhaling. And exhaling, hinging forwards once again. Choosing if you need any books or bricks or anything like that to support the hands, to support the fold. Letting those toes lift either by themselves or by popping that brick underneath them. Keeping that left hip pulling forwards, right hip drawing back. And then inhaling, coming all the way back up, stepping up to the top and having a shake out if you need, rolling through. So we're going to come to the wall now, so removing any bits and pieces that you have out of the way. And we'll start off by facing the wall for a kind of warrior one like position. So have your feet maybe a metre or so apart. Back foot ideally pointing about 45 degrees, heel on the ground. If the heel comes off slightly, then that's also fine. Hands can rest onto the wall. Bending through the front leg and pressing into the back heel. So actually, maybe the toes might be pointing slightly more forwards. Breathing through, pressing that back heel into the mat when the direction of the mat and then straightening it out, swapping sides. Breathing through once again. You might notice that one side you're feeling like you're getting much more of a stretch than the other. So perhaps one side is significantly tighter or looser than the other side. And then stepping up, turning to the back this time and have the heel slightly lifted, so you're using the wall for support here. Bring the front foot forwards, if you need to take a few steps, that's fine. That back heel is slightly lifted, and then you're coming into a warrior one like position. So maybe just turn those back toes out at a diagonal slightly, so you're getting that warrior one foot positioning, even though the heel is lifted. Drawing the hips 
towards forwards or maybe almost all the way forwards. They might not quite get all the way around. And then inhale to come up. So just because your heel is lifted, you might find that your bottom is sticking out. So draw the tailbone in, even if it means you have to straighten through the front leg slightly or bend the back leg. Squeezing that back hip forwards, keeping that tailbone tucking, pushing the heel backwards. And then on your next inhale, straightening up, releasing the hands, stepping that back foot in, and then swap sides. Nudging it backwards to feel the wall, turning those toes out so the heel is slightly more into the midline than the toes are. Drawing the hip forwards, bending into the front knee, inhaling the hands up, and maybe you need to take that little tuck in again. If you're not quite sure if your tailbone is tucked or not, take the hands back onto the hips, and then you'll feel your thumb to up and down with your hips as you tuck the tailbone under. Breathing through the nose. Make sure those shoulders are relaxing down as well. It's quite tempting to have them scrunched up by the ears, but let them soften down even though the fingertips are reaching high. And then straightening up, just step backwards onto the mat so you've got lots of room. Forward, forwards, hinging from the hips as you exhale all the way down to the ground. And just start to walk the hands out towards your downward dog. So you can keep the heels on the ground for as long as possible here. The feet do need to come apart. Just take them apart before you get all the way there. And then maybe you're a hand width or so, maybe a little bit more from your downward dog and you feel like you've got the full stretch. So then you can just bend the knees, let the heels come off and step that extra little bit forwards. So you've got your downward dog. And then either keeping it static again or maybe you're reaching one heel to the ground and then the other, walking out that downward dog again. Or maybe just keep pressing the heels back in the direction of the ground. And then lowering down onto the knees, just drawing them forwards crossing over the ankles, just swinging the legs out to the side so you can come into your seated pose. Then here you'll grab a strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, just any kind of belt will be fine. Just make sure it's not too thin so it's not cutting into your feet or not too stretchy. Ready for your forward fold. Just unravel out the strap, bring it forward, have it on the balls of your feet. So if it's too low, you won't be pulling the feet up here. So you want to get this ability to keep the feet lifting, toes towards the ceiling. So you'll start off in upright position, make sure the chest is lifted, so you're not having to hunch forwards here. Lifting up. And then just go into whatever feels right for you, so just walking the hands down the strap. Keeping that chest lifted, so if you remember what I said before about not dropping the head down towards the knees, think about that again, think chest lifting towards the toes. Maybe on that next exhale, you'll walk the hands a little bit further. If your hands can reach the feet, then great. Just make sure that you're holding on near the top of the feet, keeping the feet lifted. You might even start to bring a sense of lightness into the heels. They might just barely be putting any weight onto the ground. Maybe you'll even take the peace fingers around the big toes and pull them forwards. Just make sure you're never ever yanking when you're folding. Always encouraging and always only going deeper on the exhale. One more breath here. And then walking the hands back up to the top, releasing off the strap. You just pop it to one side for the time being. And then just cross at your ankles, roll back over into your all fours, and we'll come back into that little stretch that we did before. Pressing out. Creating that little bit of space once again. Tucking the toes, lifting up and back into your downward dog. If you're ever uncertain of whereabouts your hands, your feet, your hips should be, start off by curling into the plank, and that way you know that your hands and feet are in the right direction apart. 
and then to get the hips where they want to be if you're not sure if you're rounding forwards or back take a nice big generous bend into the knees press the stomach towards the upper thighs and then work the legs in the direction of straight without moving the hips or the spine you've got a nice long spine here hips are up to the sky shoulders are behind the wrists and head is dropped down from here bring the right leg forwards in between the hands dropping down we can take a little bit of a variation on our low lunge here by taking that right arm you might just want to straighten the leg so you can tuck it completely under the knee and inhale up that feels a little bit wobbly you can either take the left hand or you can even grab onto your blanket again you might want to just have it not quite as rolled so tight or a smaller towel bend into that knee might take a couple of goes to get it there and lifting up Mine's a little bit slippery, so I'm just going to try and hold it in place with my hands, but hopefully you'll be able to put your hands onto the floor. And hopefully you're also getting a nice little hip stretch here, particularly through that front part of the hip, which can be tight for a lot of people. And then exhaling down, stepping back to your plank in your downward dog. And then left side, so bringing that left leg through maybe taking an arm or blanket underneath the knee lifting up squeezing in so it's another bit of a myofascial release there breathing through releasing off stepping back downward dog again And then walk forwards one step at a time on each step press into the heel I'm just bringing each foot to the same place as the other side so that I'm not giving one side of my leg more of a stretch than the other one leg more of a stretch than the other and then when you come all the way to your forward fold maybe you have to start bending your legs part the way up just fold forwards here. Bringing that blanket, that towel back towards you again, unravel it, unraveling it partly if you need, lifting at the toes, folding back forwards once again. Remember those hands can always be lifted up, having a bit of a bend into the knees if you need. And in fact, that can actually take the forward fold more into your calves and your hamstrings. Before you release the blanket, step back, drop onto the knees for your child's pose. And take a final couple of breaths here before we end the practice. Expanding the rib cage, letting it fall. And then coming back up. So thanks very much for practicing with me today. Hopefully you've learned some techniques to lengthen out the calf muscles, whether that's because they're just tight, maybe you're a runner or a cyclist. Just try and incorporate a few of these stretches either into your gym routine, your yoga practice, or just make a habit out of coming back to this video every few days and seeing if it makes a difference for you. Thanks very much for watching. Namaste.